Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. And we have Larry on his phone there down in the Southland. Hi, Larry. Hi, Stuart. How are things going down south? Well, maybe things are going south down south. I don't know. (laughs) I can't keep my landline up, and I'm working on a weak cell phone right now. Okay. Well, we hope you can hang in there with us. I wanted to start with some scripture reference. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Beware of false prophets uh, which come to you in sheep's clothing, obviously Christians. Inwardly, however, they are ravening wolves. Now, the reason I wanted to bring part of this up is, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it or not, is that there are visions uh, that some people have had about uh, UFO arrival. And that out of the ships will come uh, the Lord himself. And that he will be rescuing people. And uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, That is totally unscriptural. Uh, The return of Jesus Christ for his church is not a landing on earth. It is a situation where you are vanished, I guess, would be a good word to use. You're simply not there anymore. In the twinkling of an eye, less than a millisecond, you're changed into something else. Now, that does not mean necessarily that your body goes with it. Uh, There's two ways of looking at that. Larry did a lot of uh, research, very good, on the possibility of a die-off. Larry, how long ago was that that you went into that? (laughs) Oh, Lord, uh, that was the one I got all kind of, I got a lot of flack for naming it uh, God's Prehistoric Rapture because the Book of Jasher and I think Jubilees kind of sets it up. And uh, it's very clear that (coughs) what happened to the people that love God, I mean, they were out of here, but they were not out of here like everybody figured they were. They died off. It was a massive die-off. There are references in the scripture that would indicate that bodies are, in fact, left behind. One of them was where Jesus says uh, where the eagles are, their carcasses will be, or where the carcasses are, that's where the eagles gather. Uh, a reference to possibly we fly up on eagles' wings. In other words, we shed the physical body, and we only leave with the spiritual body, but it's it's done in a millisecond. So there is argument both ways, and uh, we may all be surprised (laughs) as to uh, what's really going on. My point I wanted to make to to everyone is, if you're still on the ground and some UFO lands, or many UFOs land, and you're still here, uh, chances are they're liars. In fact, I'll go further than that. They are liars if they relate it in any way to the church or uh, to Jesus Christ and the taking of his bride. And uh, I just wanted to make that point absolutely clear to people. The Bible says that... uh, When this takes place, when the bride of Christ is removed, the church, um, this is going to be probably a lot different than what is portrayed in a lot of the movies and whatnot, because it is in the twinkling of an eye, all of this takes place worldwide. We've talked about the 
plasma event because lightning is plasma, and Jesus refers to his return basically as lightning. And it's a global plasma event. And um, I, I don't know if you remember Ken Peters' vision when he was a young, very young man who didn't know anything about the Bible, was shown uh, the resurrection of the dead. Um, and uh, it was, I guess one could say, that graves were exploding all over the world. And I guess the people in the world finally figured out what had happened. And, of course, they were left behind. And uh, many, many people are going to be left behind because they're blocking all of this. Uh, Anyway, uh, don't be deceived. And he says, "Take uh, take heed that you be not deceived. This is from Jesus. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And a time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. Now, a lot of people think these are false Christs, but they aren't. False Christs are addressed elsewhere. Read carefully what it says. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus Christ, am the Christ. And uh, they have a they have a false gospel. This is the same ones that Peter was talking about, that speak evil of the way of the truth. They, they, uh, they come down here to deceive many. What do we got? Preachers, teachers, evangelists all over that are, have a false salvation gospel. It's not true at all. You can shoot it down a million times by Scripture alone. I want to read something. I, got, I don't know who this is. I, it was just sent to me. But it's what I've been trying to say for a long, long time, over 30 years now, I guess. There is only one way to God, this is what the message says, and heaven. And only a few find it. And Christianity is not it. No, I'm not an atheist, even though I'm an ex-Catholic, ex-Christian, ex-skeptic, in that order, and was on the verge of becoming an atheist when God showed me the truth. You can believe whatever you want about God, the Bible, Christianity, religion, and me. God gave you free will, after all, and most people, especially Christians. Now, this is the key to the whole thing. will not let what the Bible actually says interfere with what they believe, no matter what you show them, which is why I do not engage in debates or comments. Uh, Unfortunately, that's a true statement. Peter told you, Jesus Christ told you, warned you. Even in the book of Revelation, the modern-day church is considered to be a monster, a beast, and it lies through its teeth. Um, It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Anyway, uh, I wanted to get to that arrival because this is kind of interesting. I want to read something to you from Guinness Worth. He is a Greek expert and uh, has done just a tremendous amount, somewhat like Stan Dale did on the book of Daniel and what he found out when he did the book of Daniel uh, about the arrival. Uh, This arrival is not what people think it's going to be. This arrival is deadly to humanity. It's the final capstone of the strong delusion. There have been some movies made about um, a hybrid government. Uh, Alien Nation is one of them. And anyway, I want to read to you from Second Thessalonians. Now listen carefully to how, now this is a Greek expert. It's called the New Testament, an expanded translation. The guy's a Greek expert, and he kind of went back into how the Greek would, how they would have thought back in those days. So here's what Paul is saying about the arrival, basically or the coming of of the Antichrist. 
Now, I am requesting you, brethren, with regard to the coming and personal presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, even our being assembled together to him, not soon to be unsettled, the source of this unsettled state being your minds, neither be thrown into confusion, either by spirit, a believer in the Christian assembly, claiming the authority of divine revelation and claiming to give the saints a word from God or through a uh, word received personally as from us or through a letter falsely alleged to be written by us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come and is now present. Do not begin to allow anyone to lead you astray in any way, because that day shall not come except the aforementioned departure of the church comes first, and the son of perdition, who sets himself in opposition to and exalts himself above everyone and everything that is called God, or that is an object of worship, so he sets himself in the inner sanctuary of God, proclaiming himself to be deity. Now, it's very, very interesting that this is how he interprets uh, Thessalonians. And basically what he says, you know, <clears throat> do, do you not remember that while I was still with you, I kept on telling you these things, and now you know with a positive assurance that which, namely the departure of the church, the saints being assembled together to the Lord, is preventing his Antichrist being disclosed as to his true identity in his strategic appointed time for the mystery of the aforementioned lawlessness is now operating, and only he, the Holy Spirit, who is holding the lawless down, will do so until he goes out from the midst of humanity. Uh, that is a very, very interesting take on on the, the church leaving before just before Antichrist is revealed, and what he's really saying is as long as the church is here, Antichrist can't be revealed. And it goes along, if you want to go back into Lot, for example, remember what it said? Lot, until you leave, we can't do anything. You must be departing from uh, the area, or we can't judge it. And yeah, really, like the same comment. thing happened with Noah. Anyway, yeah, Larry. Yeah, I, I just want to make two comments there. One thing that crossed my mind as you were sharing that about uh, he that lets till he's taken out of the way. I mean, I, that's King James, of course. But mm -hmm. uh, oddly enough, that parallels basically the Old Testament when God's glory left the temple just before the destruction. And uh, not only yeah. that, when you talk about Lot, remember, he really was hesitating on leaving and his family too. Remember, the angels grabbed him and drug him out of there pretty much. <laughs> yeah, violent removal, basically, which is what the word rapio actually means. I know a lot of people argue, there's no such thing as a rapture in the Bible. Well, wake up, folks. Please wake up. Uh, the word rapture is a coined phrase. That's all it is. What is really being discussed is a violent removal of the church. And uh, if you've ever been close to a lightning bolt, you know how, you know exactly how violent that can be. So I don't know. I, I'm just trying to warn people over and over again, you better get into that scripture and you better get off your high horses and you better read exactly what Jesus Christ said and what he commanded. He was not idly talking just for the fun of it. Um Anyway, uh, enough of that, I guess. Um, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, we've got some 
people have took to heart our request for information. And, uh, Larry, you've got a, a couple, and I've got a couple. I think maybe they're the same. We were just copied. And I noticed they were on Q-Alerts as well. This is a lady, and uh, she says, I'll start with the first one. My brother lives in Oregon City, Redland, Oregon. The last couple of days he has been in level one evacuation because of the fires in Clackamas, Clackamas County. Well, today he went to level three, which means leave now. And I guess a lot of people have perished uh, out there, and they don't even know how many. He woke up without electricity and started to get ready to leave. The fire was close, ash falling outside, so he hooked up his tent trailer and started the first part of the evacuation. It took him two hours to travel 12 miles because of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on Redland Road. He got his tent trailer parked at Clackamas Community College and headed back to his house to grab the balance of his stuff. Clackamas Community College is now being evacuated because they have just gone to a level three also. When he got home, his neighbor was packing up to leave and they stopped to chat for a moment. The neighbor works for the Portland General Electric. He had been out working on the lines all morning. He told my brother that Antifa started the fires, told him they had arrested six of them and almost caught another one today. He said they are now breaking into homes in Canby, Oregon, and starting the fires inside the homes. Thought you might like to know what is really happening in Oregon, folks. This uh, I've long thought that... Uh, these fires, a lot of them, of course, were were um, high tech, laser weapons, microwave weapons, and stuff. Is no question at all. From if you look down on it uh, as an aerial, that uh, this is clearly high tech. But this appears to be, Larry. What do you think? It appears to me that this is just one more phase of uh, bringing America down. Well, it's part of the coup. This is a communist coup, and yep. that's how they do. Uh, you know, that's and, and and at the same time, just like in Germany, uh, civil law and order, local law and order was restrained, so they wouldn't stop the brown shirts from torturing and killing people and 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 setting destruction. We're seeing the same thing. It's the same old playbook, Stuart. Yeah. Here's another one she said, update to what I wrote yesterday. People in Oregon know what is happening, even if it is not being reported in mainstream media. In other words, mainstream media, of course, like the Communist News Network, they're all lying to you. I hope you will report this with vigor and get the word out. Here is what happened late yesterday afternoon. There is a person by the name of Ty Nelson. He is a shirt-tail relative of my son. Ty's niece is married to the police chief in Oregon City. The police chief told Ty to go back into the evacuation area where Ty's home is and protect his home from Antifa. The police chief said that the Antifa are going into the evacuated areas late at night, breaking into homes, taking what they want, and when they are done, they burn the house down. This is keeping the fires going. I told you yesterday that six Antifa had been arrested and only in the Oregon City area. This is happening all over the state. Anyway, uh, he spent the night in his house in a level three evac area, and his only companion was his rifle. This is a sad state of affairs. Now, he says, funny thing, or she does, we fell short of recalling our illustrious governor. The areas being attacked and burning are conservative Christian and patriots. Sounds like I am a conspiracy theorist. A theorist. So there you go. There you go, folks. And 
you're not being told any of this. And I would imagine the same thing's happening in Washington as well as Oregon and probably California. If you got anything on that you want to add, Larry? Well, we're just hearing more and more of, of the uh, lolly. You know, remember what Kamala Harris warned, and she had a smirk or a smile on her face when she said it. She said, this is not going to stop until the election, and she said, not even after the election, it won't stop. This is a coup, Stuart. They're taking yep. over the country. Yep, it's a communist coup, and yet still nobody wants to call it that on mainstream media. You're being lied to, totally. And uh, th- there are many prongs to an overthrow of a government, and that's what they're involved with. In fact, I was reading an article where uh, the military, many military people have been coming out and saying Trump is, uh, you know, this and Trump is that. He needs to be removed. Actually, they are in violation of the law when they do that. And it's just part, another part of the uh, communist coup. These got to remember, a lot of these guys like Mattis and whatnot were all brought in under Obama. And you may also remember that Obama discharged loyalists to the Constitution. Many, many, many officers were removed under Obama. And he brought in these communists who wear our military uniforms. As far as I'm concerned, they're all traitors. But uh, like Larry was telling me before the uh, show, uh, nothing is going to happen to any of these people. I know QAnon is, oh, we're going to arrest everybody, and they're all going to go to Gitmo, and Hillary's going to be in a jumpsuit that's orange and chains. and It's all baloney. It's not going to happen. In fact, nothing in Washington is going to happen to these people. Psalm 2, the kings and the rulers of the earth get together against the Lord, against his anointed. The whole thing is ultimately to get rid of Jesus Christ and the thought of Jesus Christ from off this planet. That's the goal. may not look like that, but that's actually what it is. In America, which is a so-called bastion of Christianity, uh, has to go. The Constitution has to go. Bill of Rights has to grow. Remember Obama? When he said the old ways don't work anymore, they just don't work. Well, what are the old ways? Let's see, Constitution, Bill of Rights, Christianity, moral and ethical uh, government, uh, family, uh, going to church, et cetera, et cetera. Obama came right out and told uh, the people of America, and he told it especially to the children, Because remember, this was in his graduation speech to the kids. The old ways don't work. I don't know how more plain he could have been as to what the plans are for America. And still, (laughs) American people are comatose. Larry, what, what else you got? Well, uh, I find it really interesting. I was looking back on, uh, you know, Yahoo News, and I posted it today on my blog, came out with a report about the space fleet and the Space Force. And I got out one of Barry Rothman's old Torah codes on the Space Force, and I was looking. Here's the headline. This is Yahoo News. This is not, uh, you know, some rag in the background of, uh, you know, conservative speech. This is... (laughs) Yahoo News, they're, they're mostly leftist. It says U.S. Space Force deploys its troops not to the moon, but to the 609th Air Operations Center at Al Udeed Air Base, Qatar. Troops control space assets to be used on Earth battlefields. Let me read that again. Troops control space assets to be used on Earth battlefields. Now that that says a lot, but let me read you the uh, what it what the uh, code said again, and then I'll get your comments, Stuart. Uh, mm-hmm. Number one, space force. Number two, aliens. Number three, UFO. Number four, Musk. Number five, in the end of days. Six, or war. So basically, what we're hearing uh, is basically in this code, 
that in the end of days that there's going to be a space force, maybe connected to aliens too, using UFOs, and guess what? It's for war. What do you think? Are we getting there? I think we're definitely very much getting there, and it ties directly into the arrival. You know, when the Navy and the other military forces begin to reveal that, oh, yeah, maybe the UFOs really are real, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, they're, they're not built by anything we know about Earth, and that's coming from official channels, you know perfectly well, then, that the arrival relation is very, very close at hand. It has to be. So they're getting ready for something. And uh, that situation over there in Richfield, uh, Utah, I think it is, uh, what's the latest on that? The last I heard from uh, Dave Hodges was that uh, troops had now shown up in Richfield guarding a certain area. Uh, seems kind of odd that we've had well over 21 planes now land there and uh, discharging probably continuity of government situation. They're getting ready. It It's possible it's an exercise, but you, you, you know as well as I do, Larry, that exercises of late, anyway, have had a very strange thing about going live and becoming real. In fact, COVID-19, remember when uh, Pompeo came out and said, well, this is a live exercise. And Trump said, well, why didn't you tell us? This is how they operate. Oh, it's just an exercise, but then it goes live. So why do you need military forces down there in a small, tiny town guarding, uh, obviously, a place where you go down into the deep underground tunnels. And I know there are a lot of people out there that, well, you know, roll their eyes when they hear, there are no such thing as these tunnels. Well, you ought to talk to some of the truckers that have gone down there and driven for hundreds of miles in these underground tunnels. They are real. They are there. And if you want to roll your eyes and say they're not there, then it, there is no law against being stupid, and there is no law about being a foolish person. It's just there is no law against it. And uh, people, for whatever reason, just like in Christianity, are denying factual evidence. Now, the other place is Kingman, Arizona. I guess both of them are in Arizona. Uh, or you, I can't. Are they Arizona or Utah, Larry? No, that uh, Utah is where Utah. that is. And, well, a whole uh, bunch. And, and for the, for the, <laughs> go ahead. I was just, go, I was just going to say, all those people rolling their eyes and say it's not there. I just wanted to give them this little note: it's not there for you. So if you don't want to believe <laughs> it, it don't make any difference. It ain't there for you. Period. Yes. What they did, folks, was take your tax money and built it for the for government people. You, on the other hand, are to be left outside to either watch the arrival of uh, the destroyer. I mean, you could get up on a high place near your play, uh, house and watch this big red giant object coming in, but that's that's your fate. And once again, the American people allowed their government to do all this. And our government, for whatever reason, and according to the Bible, is very, very evil. And they have very evil intent. And uh, you don't count. None of you count. And uh, I don't know what else to say about it. Now, this Kingman, Utah, is totally different. Um, I was just reading an article, Larry, on, I don't know if you saw it, but Dave Hodges evidently uh, got some people from there to talk about what's going on. And I guess there's something like a thousand troops all pulled into a Walmart there, disembarked, and were, according to what I heard uh, from Dave Hodges, they were fairly aggressive towards the town people. 
but here's what's interesting. There's a lady down there who has rounded up a whole bunch of people to protest the mayor and her dictatorial stuff like this lady in Michigan uh, who, who runs a dictatorship. And um, anyway, I'm wondering, are those troops there because of her activity? And I don't know, she's got like 18, 1900, 2000 people on her side battling this uh, COVID-19 ridiculousness. And I'm just wondering, is the military there to put down this rebellion, to put down this insurrection, as it were? What do you think? Well, according to uh, Dave Hodges, they're there to guard the entrances to those tunnels. Yeah, that's what I've heard. But just wondering, because of I did not know that there was kind of an insurrection there. So maybe they got a dual duty. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, what else you got? Oh, here's something I want to well, read. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you've referred to this. I just got off the phone with a reliable source. No further informa- information about that source. Source lives in Portland, Oregon, metro area. There are reports of not only arson fires popping up where they would not naturally, but armed exchanges in the rural areas of Clackamas County. Half of Clackamas County, huge, has been evacuated. Talking about rural warfare, many rounds exchanged and people witnessing Molotov cocktails being thrown into the tender, dry bush. Have they moved out now into the rural districts? If they have, the rest of the nation states will be next. Well, that's what everybody's being told that's got any one eye and a half cents is that uh, they're already doing it there, and they're coming everywhere else. So, uh, And the reason is, it's such a big country, Stuart. They're going to have to keep this up after the election. If they're going to take the whole country, they have to do this everywhere. You know, I, I still say that there's going to be some parts of the country, they're going to need a whole lot more of them because a lot of them are going to be laying out there on the ground. You got that right. They start coming into the rural districts because that's why they want the guns. Because if they start coming into the rural districts, the farmers will simply shoot them. And they will be shooting first and asking a lot of questions after they're dead, you know, digging through their pockets to find out who they are. Uh, we need to remember, folks, Walmart and the Walmart stores all over this country that are going to be collection centers for whatever reason. And now they're using it, seems like, contagion or COVID-19 as the primary weapon if you test positive, and by the way, the tests are worthless, and they've admitted they're worthless, uh, but if you test positive, off you go to a uh, probably a Walmart center first or some other distribution place, then taken to a FEMA camp. And, uh, you know, even kids... Parents are being notified, well, your kid may not come home, Uh, might have to stay overnight or so. Uh, I don't know what is wrong with the American parent, but something is. And don't forget uh, Jade Helm and the FEMA camps and the Walmarts and the underground tunnels, again, are connected in many locations, I guess, to Walmarts. Anyway, under the CV-19, of course, they're going to be isolation centers. And uh, who knows where it goes from that. But it's kind of interesting. Anyway, in your uh, your blog, uh, you got amazing Dems coincidence found. GOP Republicans demand answers that DOJ reveals Mueller's team against Trump wiped clean. Uh, their cell phones, evidently. What's the story on that? Well, I just watched uh, Lou Dobbs, and if people don't watch Lou Dobbs on Fox Business, they're missing a lot of news. 
you won't white, you won't see it on Fox either. It's on Fox Business. But uh, he, he and Tom Fitton with Judicial Watch was, was actually talking, and Tom Fitton is the one that broke the story because he sued and got the DOJ's information after months and months that uh, Mueller and all of his people had wiped all of their phones clean, just like Hillary Clinton. And uh, this was intentional, and it was done to mislead. Uh, I don't know why they got to mislead any investigations. We don't have a government that can investigate anymore. It's absolutely a complete joke. That, and that's why I talked to you before the show, Stuart. Lou Dobbs and Tom Fitton basically come to the conclusion we don't have to worry about a roundup. The only ones that are going to round up is going to be God's people, if you will. <laughs> That's me saying that. Uh, you know, the, the patriots and the conservatives and the Christians and Jews, uh, because the deep state is all deep state, and there is no justice in Washington, D.C. And if you're expecting it to come out of Washington, D.C., well, you need to change binoculars. <laughs> That's a good way to word it. Okay, the next one you've got down here, Strange Sounds. Headline, temperatures plunged by 60-plus degrees in under 24 hours. Snow in Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, and South Dakota. Actually, right here in Wisconsin, we got down to about 34 degrees the other night. And um, if it hadn't clear, if if it had not cleared off and the rain had continued, we would have had snow here. We just happened to look out. Uh, any more news on that? I mean, damn, this weather is so erratic now, folks. You can expect anything. Uh, it's well, way abnormal. What, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Stuart, you said anything new on that. Some of the newest information, Dayo and others, Dutch Sense, and a number of them are actually uh, indicating now they seem to have uh, visual radar proof that uh, this Arctic blast was pulled out of the Arctic and sent way early with weather warfare. And, of course, they're claiming they believe it's Russian weather warfare, but that's being used. And, by the way, if you haven't looked at a uh, satellite map of all the the of actually the Atlantic uh, yes hurricane season uh, it, it's lighting up like a Christmas tree there there are disturbances and locations that are forming uh, depressions all the way from almost the Gulf of Mexico all the way to Africa it's unbelievable Stuart. Yeah, hey, and well, I hopefully gonna, the, gonna, we, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to mention something else right quick. I'll send you a link after the show. I just barely found it a while ago. Lindsey Williams, and you're familiar with him. He's supposed to be oh, yeah. in with insider with the elite, and, and I can't bet this right now, but I wanted to give it to you uh, since you mentioned that because uh, he was warning the American people to get ready before November the 3rd, and he said the reasons that he just recently found out from inside the, uh, if you will, the uh, elite is that uh, he found out the secret of the purpose of coronavirus, and he also found out there is another plague coming that is not going to be that easy. They're sending another one. They're, they're, you know, this is a, they're going after the world. And he said then, number three, which it ties into what you said, he said that uh, that we're going to have incredible, horrific weather before November the 3rd election. And he's also given a warning on your iPhone. Now, I haven't heard it all. I heard about the first 10 or 12 minutes, and I had to get off and get on this show. But I'll send you that link if you want to listen. But uh, yes. he's revealing some stuff that apparently uh, all of this that we're experiencing is part of the plan. Yeah. Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. They've planned this for a long, long time. And the American people are been dumbed down to the point where, you know, I don't I don't know why they're not thinking. I don't I, I can't figure it out other than the mystery of iniquity. Uh, anyway, headline former CIA spook. This is from your blog warns U.S. violence will get much worse. Uh, CIA counter intel expert Kevin Shipp 
BLM and Antifa want a civil war. So I guess that verifies what we've been talking about, doesn't it? Well, it absolutely does, Stuart, and and uh, that's why that it ain't going to really matter who wins the election. They're taking the nation, Stuart. That's the plan. Yes. And unfortunately, according to Bible prophecy, they're going to take it. Uh, we lost it a long time ago, actually. And uh, I was shown that, I don't know how many years ago, no. And uh, the Lord said, it's over. And, um, you know, it. we're at that final phase where America is going to go down. Uh, this uh, Israeli uh, peace accord, or whatever you want to call it, they're renaming it, I noticed. Uh, but now Trump says more nations are going to be coming on. Is this that covenant of many or with many that uh, Daniel speaks of? It's beginning to look like it could well be. Well, it's very possible, Stuart, because uh, they announced, or actually Trump announced it today, that Bahrain has now agreed to the peace treaty. They're, they're actually uh, trying to form it as a peace treaty. Uh, that's what they seem to be calling it. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I've assumed they were going to call it the Abrahamic Covenant, <laughs> but uh, they haven't mentioned Abraham. But what's odd is the fact that uh, Netanyahu, according to uh, information, has taken a private trip to Washington, D.C. Uh, to go to the White House for this peace treaty ceremony next Tuesday is what they're saying, unless that changes. We need to watch that really, really close. Uh, the UAE delegation is going to be flying in on another another plane, and uh, we we did hear over the last day or two that uh, Saudi Arabia is, uh, is now allowing uh, flats across Israel and across uh, the Middle East and there's a there's supposedly uh, the, that uh, MBS or Mohammed bin Salman from Saudi Arabia is now exercising uh, pressure on the Palestinians to uh, change their mind and go for a peace deal, which that's trouble because that would mean a two-state system solution. Yeah. And it, it, But what's interesting, too, is that Qatar, oddly enough, and I mentioned that earlier in the show, tying in with the Space Force, Qatar now has been shutting off all of Hamas's uh, money, uh, which apparently they're forcing them to bend to something. We don't know what, but they're saying that other Arab countries also are, are beginning to say they want to be a part of this deal. So something's forming that's really, Stuart, it's historic without a doubt. Yeah. And, uh, of course, there's two ways you can look at in-day events, because the Lord generally doesn't say who does it. But I've often wondered if they are not trying to mimic the so-called prophecies for the return of Christ. They mimic those in order to bring in their anti-messiah and not realizing that in the mimicking of what they're doing uh it's actually the real thing and they just don't know it kind of like when israel said we got to get rid of this guy uh he's gonna or, or we're gonna lose our nation speaking about the lord and so they crucified him not realizing hey, that sir. by doing it they fulfilled their own prophecies so it makes you wonder if the trap that they're, they have set for humanity is exactly that. They set it up for the false messiah only to fall into their own trap. Uh, here's something, too, from... Um, hey, 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 before you go anywhere, yeah, go ahead. let me add something. Yeah, yeah I, I just wanted to add, because I'm sure you haven't seen it, uh, something you mentioned there really struck me. You said maybe they're trying to push these prophecies forward even early. And uh, yes. I don't know if you saw it, but Breaking Israel News two days ago showed a uh, report that uh, Israel had brought in 50 or 50, more than 50 foreign workers to work their fields and said that was fulfilling prophecy of, of the coming Messiah because just before he comes, Israel, that foreign workers would come in to, 
work the fields in Israel. So somebody is pushing an early agenda of prophecy fulfillment. Yeah, and it makes you wonder if uh, <laughs> they, that's what they think they're doing, and they're actually fulfilling the prophecy themselves, not realizing they think it's a big joke. They're, they're a trick on the people, when in reality it isn't. It's a trick on them. Anyway, Yellowstone, super volcano rumbling. Uh, the super volcano beneath Yellowstone is rumbling since about 2 o'clock this morning. This is December 10th. Some of the rumbling has been very significant. Uh, then they go down here and he says, there is presently no indication at all of an eruption, but folks may want to keep an eye for a day or two to see if the rumbling climbs down. Now, here's my remark on that one. Have we ever seen a super volcano go off? The answer is no. Well, if we haven't seen one go off, how do we know how it reacts just before it does go off? Maybe it's not like a normal volcano. Maybe it just all of a sudden decides it's time. What do you think? Well, uh, <laughs> that's true, and, and to tie that in also, not only is Yellowstone shaking, uh, and we know it has lots of magma under it, but uh, the whole Cascades, and even in California, and Dutch Sense has done a lot of work on this. He says a lot of those uh, earthquakes are shallow. Like one, They had one out there this morning, I think a four, uh, by Lone Pine, I believe it was, California, 1.7 kilometers deep. That has to be magma. That's too yeah, shallow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If it's that shallow. Uh, let's see. No more time, no more time. This is a prophecy, so you just put it in the back of your head. I say to you this day, there is no more time. There is no more time. I tell you truly, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. I tell you now and once again, repentance is now. Come sit and let us reason together. The time of the Lord is at hand. His kingdom come, his will be done. There is no more time to wait. Behold, I come quickly and knock at your heart. Will you invite me in? I'm not going to read the rest of it, but I thought that was kind of interesting because we're getting more and more and more of those kind of prophecies. We're getting so close, getting so close. Close. What do you think, Larry? Hard to tell, I guess, but the way it looks. Yeah, and, and Stuart, there seems to be a lot of confusion, too, uh, because it seems like we were on one timeline, uh, you know, back about, and this is this is interesting, because remember back when we were having all the signs in the heavens, and, and you were going over one after another, and every few days we had another one and another one and another one. Yes. And talking about the position of all the stars and, the you know, the uh, cosmos. And then suddenly, remember, Trump entered the picture, and Hillary didn't win the election, and everybody had it. It was all set for her to win, and... It's it's almost you know it changed the timeline it seemed like right there everything went south for the new world order basically, and mm -hmm. what's interesting and and makes it so confusing is Trump really never was uh, other than Cyrus you know Isaiah forty five and others um, you know never was in the prophecies that much uh, everybody actually I actually remember reading prophecies that. Oh, Barack Obama, number 44, would be the last house in Washington. Yes, oh, the yes. Last, you know. And so what's interesting is, though, this timeline seems to have changed with Trump. And Augusto has been wondering if maybe the timeline now is trying to go back again to the left. And and Trump in the middle of this, it seems like, Stuart, that there, there, it has created a lot of spiritual confusion or chaos. And I've never seen it so bad. Have you? No, not the way it is now. But then again, Babylon is confusion. And uh, <laughs> d definitely the people 
of Babylon are very, very confused individuals, especially, uh, be, uh, you know, there's so much fake stuff out there now. And then you got wars and rumors of wars coming on all the time. And you got the left battling the right. And then you've got left and right all at one time the same. And, and so you, you know, you listen to Lindsey Graham, you get one side of the story. You listen to somebody else, you get another. You tune into QAnon, and they're telling you all this stuff, oh, it's going to happen tomorrow morning. Uh, nothing happens. So the only thing we really have left is the scripture. And the foundation of all end-time prophecy is Psalm 2. So that's where we have to hang our hat. And I know people don't like that, but it doesn't matter if you like it or don't like it. God says in Isaiah, I have an agenda, and nobody's going to stop me. Who are you? Is the UN going to stop me? Uh, Nobody's going to stop the Lord. He has his agenda. He's laid it out in in the Bible Anybody that really studies the Bible knows essentially what the agenda is. And uh, we're watching it happen. And like Larry just said, confusion, I believe, is probably part of this agenda. In fact, one of the guys who was, I think he was Secretary of State, I can't remember his name, this is many, many years ago, said that the New World Order would be like a giant buzzing confusion. And then all of a sudden, it would all snap into place. So I think we're in that chaos, confusion stage. And uh, you only do have the Bible to show you uh, what's going on. The Lord gave you prophecy so that you'd understand the timeline. And that would also maybe kick people in the butt to get themselves out of the matrix and uh, do what the Lord told them to do. Millions of Christians, according to Matthew chapter 7, stand before the Lord totally rejected. Now that is scary, scary stuff. It's kind of like Second Thessalonians. When the arrival takes place, it is a deception. It is a strong delusion. When the arrival takes place, now, Larry and I have talked often about, uh, you know, the UFOs and uh, backwards engineering that's been going on now for a long time, probably since Roswell, if not before. Uh, Then you had all of the stories about the Germans, and some of our own leaders uh, spoke about German UFO technology, anti-gravitational technology. Uh, Standale worked on, if I remember right, didn't he, Larry? Worked on anti-gravity. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you're fading out. Okay. Are you still there? Uh, I was saying, yes, he, yes, Standale did work on anti-gravity. Yeah, they, they've had this for a long time, folks. Roll your eyes if you want. But they've had anti-gravity craft for a long, long time. And um, they're just, they're tweaking it. And that is grounds for the arrival, a fake arrival. Uh, Carol Rosen, uh, who was one of Ron Braun's secretary and did all his public stuff, said that Von Braun had told her that the last... uh, thing for the military industrial complex was in fact uh, a space alien invasion a fake invasion well how are they going to do that well go to uh, the um, uh, Iron Mountain uh, on the possibility of peace and I don't remember the exact title of it but anyway in there they said that uh, UFOs were an experiment So the technology is so far advanced in what we know, they can fake an arrival that is going to fool just about everybody. 
And that's the whole agenda, is to bring in anti-Messiah. And I think the world basically is going to fall for it, uh, according to the Bible and according to Thessalonians. And this, this arrival is going to be the great big deception, the strong delusion. And it damns all those who believe in it. Anyway, what else you got, Larry, before we close down? Uh, I'll send you a copy of it later. I hadn't had time to vet it, but uh, Paul Begley just put out a uh, video, and he said, you know, talking about Mike from around the world and how he talked about the waves of energy that were coming towards Earth. Yes. And he said apparently now the government has just verified uh, what Mike from around the world said and warned about, and they are saying, if, if this is true, if this title's true, that scientists are now warning of more than 50 waves of energy are moving towards Earth. Yep, and that's what that Bel- Bulgarian prophet said, that one of these waves, a whole bunch of people vanish. And we are moving into very high energy uh, areas, and people are feeling sick, And the space radiation is increasing. Uh, The Schumann residence is up and down and periodically spikes. All of this affects human emotions. And, uh, yeah, I think we're headed into some really bad, bad stuff. However, on the other side of it, it's going to seem like the golden age of the gods, and that's the deception. And... um, what else you got, Larry? Other, we didn't talk about the earthquake in New Jersey. There was an earthquake in New Jersey, folks. Very, very rare. Something is going on under the plates. What else you got, yeah, Larry? Hal, yeah, Hal Turner. Hal Turner posted about that earthquake. It was, I believe, a three point one, which is highly unusual, and and. Uh, he was claiming that uh, even New York City was shaken with this earthquake, but it didn't even hardly make the news. Uh, and I did see uh, some reports on Fox where people in New York City were feeling the ground quaking. So something's up. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have a lot of earthquakes usually there, but I remember I grew up in Vermont, and I remember when I was in grade school uh, that we had an earthquake. And we had to rush out of the schoolhouse, and it, it's really very disconcerting when the ground starts shaking. But it wasn't a very big one, but they do have them all along. And there's, um, I don't know if you remember, but the Russian scientists were saying that the North American plate had already begun to break up. And uh, that's a very dire warning, actually. Um, anything else before we close? Well, I was just going to mention a lot of new data seems to be coming in the last uh, 24 to 48 hours of more probing uh, by the uh, Chinese fighter jets all around Taiwan. They're really yes. probing Taiwan's defenses. Yeah, and they've been kind of probing, uh, not China, but Russia's kind of been probing us as well. All of this adds up to a war is coming. We know it's coming, and You know, maybe this peace agreement comes before the war, or maybe it's after the war that brings everybody into this thing. Uh, You know, a devastating war changes a lot of people's minds, especially when millions of people are dead. Uh, All I can say, folks, is buckle your seat belt, because we are going into some rough times. It may be quiet right now. But I think there's an awful lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And if you uh, folks, if you've got any news, send it in, uh, email to us, and uh, we'll put it on the air because this is the only way we really find out what's going on. Any last word, Larry? Yeah, I would just again reiterate the fact that I would tell people to stay close at home. I wouldn't make any trips right now around the country, and I would really be aware of my circumstances and and all my surroundings. Yeah, particularly uh, in the rural districts now, in the suburbs. Yeah, they're going to move out, and they're going to be random killings. This is how they're going to install terror. Anyway, good night, folks. Thanks for tuning in and listening. And heads up, take care of yourselves. Good night.